Greetings, this is Dr. Johnson Steigelman from physicsthisweek.com, and let's start out our first unit in physics by first talking about dimensions. It turns out in physics there are two ways that we use the term dimension, and the first of these uh, ways that we use it is the way that you're probably more familiar with it uh, when we talk about the dimensions that we use in geometry. So an object that has zero dimension would be just a point, whereas a line has one dimension. If you have a surface, in other words, you take that line and spread it out in a direction perpendicular to the original line, uh, you get a two-dimensional plane, um, and that is literally a flat surface. Now, if we expand it in the other direction, uh, we get a three-dimensional object. Now, in physics, we usually use three dimensions, x, y, and z, and the orientation of those will depend on the problem that we're working on. But more often than that, we actually limit ourselves to two dimensions, and typically that is the x and y direction, um, although we can manipulate those uh, as necessary depending on the particular problem. The other way that we use dimensions in physics is when we talk about different types of measurement. So this is a sign on a, a small town in uh, out west somewhere. And the funny thing about this sign is, if you're not seeing it already, is the fact that they're adding three different types of measurements to get one group of numbers. So they've got population, which would be measured in humans, uh, feet above sea level, obviously measured in feet, and a year, and they're adding those all together. What well, turns out in physics, um, and just in life in general, you can only add these numbers when they have the same dimension. Okay, whenever we're talking about dimensions, we use brackets to denote what dimension we're talking about. So for example, L would represent the dimension of length, and I've put the L in a set of brackets. Now this leads us to the SI, or the International System of Units, also known as the metric system. And in this system of measurement, there are actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven base measurements. And those base measurements uh, are length, time, mass, temperature, amount. And typically when we talk about amounts, we're talking about number of molecules uh, or numbers of atoms, uh, those subatomic particles or those atomic particles that are very, very small. Uh, we also talk about current and light intensity. Notice that each of these dimensions has a particular unit that we're more interested in uh, whenever we're using what we call the base units. So for example, the unit for length is the meter. Uh, the unit for time is the second, although we can have other units uh, related to that, like hours and days and weeks and so on. Uh, but the base unit is second. And then the third that we'll use this semester in particular is the mass of an object. Okay, whenever we have a set of measurements, we can really only subtract or add it if they have the same dimension. So for example, I'm about five foot 10, or five foot 10 inches, if we say it with the uh, actual units all in there. And notice that five feet and 10 inches is, um, each of those things are measured in uh, dimension of length. So feet is a length unit, inches are a length unit, and I'm safe to add those three things together. Now I realize it's early in the semester be, to be talking about this type of a thing, but if we take the end of the semester, graduation this particular semester, uh, when I'm recording this, is on May 19th, 2018, and that graduation happens at uh, 2 p.m. Well, my first class of the semester is on January 29th, and it starts at 9 a.m. Well, if I want to subtract those two, it turns out that we've got physics for the next 111 days, five hours, and about zero minutes. Of course, depending on exactly when you're watching this uh, video lecture. But notice I've taken two time things and subtracted those. And each of those times uh, was measured in months, days, years, uh, hours and minutes. And when I subtract them, I also get a unit uh, or a dimension of time with mixed units of time. 
Okay. Now, if we could only use the base measurements or the base units or the base uh, types of measurements, uh, the base dimensions, then there was not a whole lot we could do, but it turns out that we can actually um, use multiples of these things or divi divisions of these things. Uh, so multiplying dividing is, is perfectly legitimate. So whenever we talk about the speed or velocity, and we'll talk about the specifics for those, we end up taking a length measurement divided by a time measurement. And so in the metric system, whenever we talk about accelerations, we also use um, length measurements divided by two time units. So when in the metric system, we use uh, meters per second for speed or velocity and meters per second squared uh, for acceleration. Now we can get even more complicated than this. We can take a base unit, multiply it by a derived unit like acceleration. So when we talk about the force, Newton's second law turns out to be the sum of the forces is the mass times the acceleration. That means that if I take a mass dimension, multiply it by a length dimension and divide it by two time dimensions or time squared dimension, then I've got a unit that is called a kilogram meter per second squared. And that has a special name in the metric system. Uh, we name that Newton, um, of course, after Sir Isaac, one of the first, uh, or not necessarily the first, but one of the most famous uh, physicists of all times. Okay, the beauty of using dimensions is when we look at equations, the dimensions or the units give us a way to check to make sure that we're doing things correctly. So in this case, the x or delta x is a unit of length. That's how far the object has moved. And I can find that by multiplying the velocity with dimensions of length over time times a time unit. And then the half has no units. That's just a number but my acceleration has those length per time squared dimension, and I'm multiplying that by uh, time squared, which has dimensions of time squared. Now it turns out I can treat these a lot like I do numbers when I was back in algebra class. And so I can cancel out the t's on the top and the t's on the bottom, and I'm left with units of length in the first term and units of length in the second term, which tells me that I've put this equation together correctly. Now, as the semester goes on, we'll mostly work with units, um, kind of as proxies for the dimensions, but they behave exactly the same way. So if I have a distance traveled in units of meters, I can get that by multiplying meters per second times seconds and Again, that one half is just a number. So I can use meters per second squared for my acceleration, second squared for my time squared, and these units nicely cancel out just the way I expect them to. So I'm adding meters equals meters plus meters. And everything is good. Now, if I do happen to make a mistake, I can usually catch that if I do my units. So one thing I should mention here is oftentimes I will put in my, um, the numbers as well, but kind of towards the end of the problem, I'll just do a quick check of the units uh, like I'm doing here. So let's say I had gone through and used meters per second times time, and then I had done uh, my acceleration, but I forgot to square. So my time, I just put it in is some number in seconds and I forget to square it. Well, when I do the algebra that allows me to cancel out some units, I end up with a meter plus a meter per second. And that's a very good sign that I've screwed up somewhere and that I will need to go back and recheck my work and hopefully catch that before I submit my answer. This is one of the neat tricks of physics. It's often self-healing so that you can fix this type of mistake uh, as necessary. Okay, as a review, remember dimension has two meanings in physics. You have your spatial dimensions or your directions. And most of the time in physics, we will use two dimensions at once, uh, usually denote those by X and Y. 
We can also use it as a type of measurement. Uh, that's what the other meaning of dimension. And the base units that we'll use mostly this semester are length, time, and mass uh, that have units in the metric system. Um, as you can see there, the Newton can turn into uh, the combination of kilogram meters per second squared. And hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, so throughout the semester, I'm going to be using uh, the OpenStax uh, textbooks as references. If you happen to be taking my physics of sound class, uh, then you might actually use that third book or fourth book that's fifth book that's listed there um, called The Physics of Music. And occasionally I'll use that in all my classes uh, just as a quick reference. If you need any other help and you'd like to watch videos similar to this one, uh, you can visit me at physicsthisweek.com and then go through the menus there to figure out the specific topic that you're looking at. Okay. Have a good week and let's do well this semester in physics.